to the third net of the day. Oh. I think she's frozen. Something's caught. Oh, no. Sadly, the third time is not a charm. The next net isn't budging. I think she's frozen. Oh, Jesus Christ. Richard and Mike will pull the net from either side to try and free it manually. They need to lift it today because they need the catch it holds. Okay, I'll pull it here. Oh, Jesus. Nothing came up. Without a snowmobile, this task suddenly becomes a lot harder and more time consuming. She's frozen, right? Solid. Oh, Jesus Christ. Ah, Jesus. She's in there good. Well, we'll get it later. Richard and Mike Bjarnison are lifting a different net on Moonlight Bay. The previous net was so badly frozen in, they decided to move on and come back another day. hand auger slips in the thick ice. It's an easy way to break fingers or sprain a wrist if Mike isn't careful. Oh, another one. Another one frozen. He's frozen again. Oh, Jesus Christ. After a roaring start to their day, Richard and Mike are now dealing with one frozen net after another. Low water levels in the lake this year are again the likely cause. Jesus. I'll put her on the bomber. Hell with it. Out of frustration, Richard decides to use the bomber to pull up the frozen net. Raise us. First, he has to remove the auger bit to reach the bumper. I need the axe. God damn it. Right. Okay. It's starting to get pretty cold out here now. That wind's picking up and it's, uh, the last couple nets was kind of miserable. Keep going, more, more. You're just ripping the whole thing. You're ripping it to nothing. Gee, well, we'll leave this one for tomorrow. Gee, what? Oh, one more. Jesus Christ. The Bjarnesons decide not to fight with these nets anymore today. They lift one more on the way home and return for the rest another day. Ain't nothing in these. Today's early victories now seem very far away. Jesus Christ. Started off pretty good with that, uh, when he got close to three boxes of the, <laughs> the second net. Yeah, it was a long day. When you're about on the tenth one, you're a little bit tired out. <laughs> A short distance away in Gimli, the same day. Well, I put it together, and... Uh, it looks like an engine now. <laughs> Amanda Walchuk has dropped by again to check on Robert's progress. You're the master mechanic. I'm a backyard mechanic. Well, uh, one critical but easy step. Did you put oil in it? Yeah. <laughs> I did that. <laughs> I did that. I changed quite a few things on the gas line where it goes through. I had it on the wrong end over there. I had it over here. I changed the fuel pump. They're a good team. Robert has been fixing his own equipment for decades, while Amanda brings her training and experience to the equation. At this point, they're learning from each other. But you can see, you're yeah, the new style mechanic. I'm the old style. A lot less modules and sensors. And my dad was a mechanic. He knows everything old school. He's got to teach me, because all I know is replace modules, replace sensors. But when it comes to new stuff, yeah, he wouldn't know what a module even is. And he's probably gonna be mad because I said that. All right, let's go start it up. 
Yeah, I just started off yet. Clocky as hell am I. There comes the good time. Now watch it, don't start. All right, darling. Here we go. What? Sounds good. That sounds mean. All I am worried about is the setting of the carburetor and I have to do that when it's cold. This is not easy. I mean, setting timing in a carburetor, a lot of people struggle with that too. I would struggle with that, but I'm not used to it. I think he's pretty good. Hey, good job, Captain. You did good. Good job. I'm happy to help you anytime. Thank you. Maybe you could teach me a couple things. This is really cool. I've never gotten to drive one of these. Robert's old bomber is back in business. If she's ever needed, she'll be waiting in the wings, ready to dance on the ice once again. All right, let's go. Can we make it to Mexico? South of Gimli, in Husavik the next morning. This is what that noise was the other day. We were coming off the lake and it, it was like an earthquake. <coughs> it felt like it was cracking real close to us, but it cracked here, obviously. It's minus 35 degrees Celsius, and exposed skin can freeze in minutes. Mike and Justin are heading to the center of the lake and plan to set 10 new nets. First, they must find a safe place to cross a new crack in the ice. We'll have to try chop here and just give her some mustard and try to get across here. The ice quake they experienced last time has produced this new fissure. Now there's open water and slush separating them from their destination. Oh, that's way too much water there. Yeah, this is a, like eight inches of slush. Make sure the skis don't go under the ice. Maybe check over there at that point. They're gonna have to skirt along to like a little point or something and chop. They need to look for the thinnest gap and knock the ice down to create safe passage for the snowmobile and the much heavier bomber. Even right there, maybe? Yeah, here. If we could chop this down a bit. Uh, this is probably about 15 feet wide. There's ice underneath. It's a shelf like this, so I just don't want the skis to dig under that. And if we ever stop, then we're just so stuck. Hopefully not sink the bomber here on day two. We only got to drive it 10 miles this year, so. I don't feel like retrieving it from the bottom of the lake. They use the snow machine to break trail for the bomber, knocking down snow and filling some of the gaps. It's critical they hit the gap with speed so the skis on the bomber don't sink. If that happens, they'll either be stuck in slush or on the way to the bottom of the lake. Well, it's probably about a foot of water, but I'm trying to skim her across and come on. I don't think he got through it, just barely. Once across, the guys are able to begin setting in deep water for the first time this season. Well, here we are in the middle of nowhere. I sure hope this is worth it. This is only like 23 feet. 23 feet? Oh, well, well, well then, can't set here. So. Uh, can it only be 23 feet deep here? So we're supposed to be like in the deepest spot of the lake here. 13 kilometers from shore, in what should be a perfect location for deeper nets, there isn't enough water to set. In the past year, drought conditions have lowered lake levels by more than a meter. We wanted to set up 10 nets today, so we drove to, literally to the middle of the lake, eight miles offshore, and now it's shallower here than it is at the four mile mark. I just don't get it. The lake is once again forcing Justin and Mike to create a new plan. The 10th largest freshwater lake in the world drops seven feet. This is two feet, call it two feet ice. We're down to 24. The net sits 20 feet. That's not a lot of clearance. 13 kilometers east of Husavik. That's cutting it close. That's cutting it close. Justin and Mike have discovered there's barely enough water to set deeper nets. Having driven all this way, they're going to try. If you drive this far out, though, you want to make it worth it. I'd like to do four more, but if you can't find or hear anything, then I'm better off to go do something else. 
Can't hear it or? Barely. Tap it. With the wind noise and the thick layer of snow over the ice, they're having a hard time hearing the knocker on the jigger below. I can't tell what the hell it is and there's so much snow here. Yeah, it's just so hard to hear. It's a faint sound as it is. The guy switched places to see if Mike's hearing is any better than Justin's. Okay, tap it again. If they can't find the jigger, they can't drill the hole to set the net. It's impossible to hear it. Look at the wind blowing. This is why it's important. You can't hear it. I could say drill here. I think I'm saying drill here, though, because of the wind. You know what I think we should do? What? We should quit fishing and go speak at high schools about what not to do. About how to lose money when you're growing up and what not to do, yeah. If it's not in this hole, this. I don't know. I, I don't know. Well, I'm going to go back because I'm going to have to pull it back anyways and jig it and tap it one more time. But then that's, that's it. My hands are frozen. Yeah, it does sound like it's over here. Okay, hammer me and drill one more hole. Come on, you son of a... Oh, there it is. We found it. We're not set anymore here. What a struggle. Way too shallow out here. Thought eight miles out, it'd be deeper than our gang at four miles, but uh, this is not how I thought the day was gonna go. The guys managed to set just four of the 10 nets they hoped for. Defeated and cold, they head for home. On the way home, as long as I don't see any more slush on this side of the crack, I'm just gonna go over it and I'm not even gonna stop. I'm kinda done with this day, so. That's the kind of day it is. They say a wind chill today of minus 47. Later that day at the Narrows. Is that all? Couldn't have done minus 50. And the coldest, most miserable weather is when there's the most fish. On a day unfit for man or beast, Chris and crew are hauling in a mountain of fish. Lots of fish, man. Get them out. It's caught somehow. Look, look, I don't want to do this. Look, you guys. See this? I don't want to do that. Chris notices the net is ripping apart as it's lifted. They're ripping because there's so much fish in here. No, never too much fish. I just can't, I gotta see what's my for myself. Oh, well, look at this, it's cracked. Where's that hammer, Devin? There's a stress crack in the lifting table, sharp enough to tear the nets. I told you it wasn't ripping down at the hole. Jesus, what the hell, as if, there's no time to slow down or pause for a proper repair on the ice. Chris flattens the sharp edge to keep things moving. Twice as much snow as ice. That's not going to melt or evaporate. It's going to have to go through the ice. It's going to candle again, but when's it going to start candling? Candled ice is ice that is rotting. It can form when the snow starts to melt and slowly disintegrates the structure of the ice making it weak and extremely dangerous to walk on. This is why we have to be here now. It doesn't matter how cold it is. We have to be here now. Damn it. I caught it on a piece of snow drift yesterday. I can see the bottom is bent right here. I can see there's a twist in it. Chris has spotted an issue with his auger. The center shaft is damaged, most likely from crashing through the deep, hardened snow drifts. You got 120 centimeters of, of snow right now on top of maybe 50 centimeters of ice. Because everywhere I go, the bottom of the bit 